An echoing duet of thunderbirds heralds the morning in Punda Maria, the most northerly and remote sand parks rest camp in the Kruger National Park. Welcome to this birder's paradise. This botanical garden abundant with variety and colour. Here, the horizon is broken by the branches of baobab trees and the plains are filled with rustling mapani. Punda Maria is a small rest camp with a few chalets and a small campsite. The main attraction is the floodlit waterhole which is frequented by herds of elephants through the day and the night. We chose a campsite in an unpowered section of the camp away from the hustle and bustle of the December crowds. We were lucky to find a shady and isolated campsite along the fence, where we were frequently visited by the wildlife. From naughty, vervid monkeys, to elephants making their way to and from the waterhole. You can see the heli. It's right there. There is also a resident flock of crested guinea fowl, with their little Elvis hairstyles, who fearlessly chased the vervet monkeys away. Although they could not save our neighbor's tent from being raided by a troop of monkeys. Luckily, we were only raided once, and only lost half an onion to the monkey burglars. So always remember to lock away all your food. A special treat was the bush babies which used the fence and our tent as a highway between trees. If you are a bit tired of driving around, you can walk the flycatcher trail around camp. It is a short 1.2 km walk, which allows you to explore the hill close to camp and offers the chance to spot some of the camp's birds. Our favourite part of the campsite was the pool, which was a welcome relief from the heat of the day. We found the same group of campers congregating there every afternoon and we discussed our sightings with our new friends and shared our favourite routes and tips to find the elusive Papuri specials, like broad build rollers. We had recently purchased the Kruger Routes, Roads and Ratings, which elucidated our decisions of which routes to take a valuable tool when exploring a new section of the park, which leads us to the very best part, the game drives. The Mahoney Loop around camp is an incredibly biodiverse loop, going from a Pawnee to Bushveld Forest, and with it comes a chance of finding all sorts of animals. From wild dog to the rare blue spotted wood dove, which we did not find. But we found plenty of Nyala, Kudu and Impala on the route. And it was always a joy to drive. Yep, woodland kingfisher. The history of Punda Maria is well known, as it was named after the Swahili word for zebra, Punda Milia the donkey of stripes. But the head ranger of the camp chose to change Melia to Maria after his wife. So Ponda Maria directly translates to donkey Maria?
day one of our Punta Maria trip and we have been rained on. We are going to Lopofontein Dam to see what's going on on that side. Anyway, we'll catch up with you guys that side. Lopofontein Dam is one of the best viewpoints close to camp. It is a bustling hive of activity from tiny bee eaters to a variety of large water birds and big five animals frequenting the dam for a cool drink through the day. The beautiful jacana is an interesting bird. They have evolved a breeding strategy where males are solely responsible for caring for chicks and can even lift up the chicks under their wings. When my parents took me to Kruger when I was young, I would keep a list of every animal we saw on our game drives. I decided to make it a habit once more on this trip, and I was astounded by the number of species we saw each day. A visit to Klopofontein alone would increase our bird and animal count by at least 25, bringing the daily average to about 65 species. Southern Carmine Bee Eater After a productive morning at the Coco Fontaine Dam we are now heading through to the Tsunami Spring which apparently is a floodplain after the rainy season and after the rains that we've had across this country a lot of fun to see it pops up after the heat of today. After our visit to Tzudzwini, we were treated to the sighting of these newly transferred male lions. We learned around the pool that these two were making trouble down south and were transferred up here where they'd have less competition. Back at camp, we found an unusual sighting. This spider hunting wasp specializes in paralyzing spiders with its sting. It then drags the spider to its nest, where it lays eggs on the still living spider, ensuring that its larvae have a fresh meal when they hatch in about 10 days time. Good morning, we are on day two of our Punda Maria trip and we have tried to wake up as early as we can which the gates open at 4.30 in December which is absolutely ridiculous and we have only gotten out at 10 past 5. Anyway, we're going to be going to Crook's Corner today and we will be then trying to find some other interesting animals as we go. Anyway, bye. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
On this leg, we encountered the thunderbirds calling. One of Kruger's big six birds, ground hornbills have an extremely long lifespan, around 50 to 60 years. They are endangered in South Africa and breed very slowly, raising only one chick at a time. We were rewarded by a lovely sight of three wild dogs. It's always a treat to see these endangered animals. They quietly slipped away soon after we saw them, and we continued on our way to Parfuri, seeing a black-backed jackal and some beautiful birds along the way. Parfuri is a great spot for birding, where you can find some rare species like the Pell's fishing owl, which we weren't lucky enough to find. But we did find the beautiful broad-billed rollers. There is little racket tails. The racket tailed roller took us a bit longer to find. A friendly ranger advised that we search in the dead trees just after the Papuri Bridge, and we were finally able to complete our list of rollers. After four hours of driving, we have finally arrived at Crook's Corner. If you're in the area, take a visit to Crook's Corner. This historic spot on the Limpopo River is right on the border between South Africa, Mozambique and Zimbabwe. The perfect spot for criminals and poachers to escape the long arm of the law by simply crossing borders. We found loads of birds in the area and enjoyed the scenic drive around Pafuri, ticking off many lifers along the way. In fact, we loved the area so much that we made the four and a half hour trip again on our final full day in Punda Maria. Our aim was to track down the Bohm's spine tail on the Pafuri Bridge and try to catch a glimpse of a leopard cub we heard was hiding out near Crook's Corner. Unfortunately, we didn't spot the leopard cub, but we did find the Bohm's spine tail. Look carefully at the little birds swooping over the Parfuri Bridge. If you spot one with a white rump and almost no tail at all, you may have spotted the Bohm spine tail. Unfortunately, we didn't capture any good footage of it as it flies way too fast, but we did snap some photos to confirm the sighting. One of the best sightings we had was of this martial eagle feasting on a monitor lizard. Back at Klopperfontein, we enjoyed this magnificent elephant having a refreshing drink. I never get tired of watching elephants at a waterhole. Whether they are playful or stately like this fellow, they are always beautiful to watch.
Green pigeon. Very big bug. Punta Maria is a really special camp, far from the busy southern section of the park. What a place to experience the beautiful birds of Kruger. Join us next time in Shingwedzi, where we experience a once in a lifetime sighting. What if we could get there? Thank you for watching.